Hey, Star Wars fans, welcome back to Rule the Galaxy. We've been going so long now, I forget what episode we are, so you can see that on your podcast uh, display of choice, but uh, we've been doing this for quite a while, <clears throat> and tonight we're really excited because we have the uh, the OG, the original gangster guest that we had way back in episode four of Rule the Galaxy. We've got T-Bob A. Bear from down in Baton Rouge, right, T-Bob? Yep. Or... Yeah, man. So we've, we've, we've got the whole regular crew here. I'll, I'll give everybody a chance to introduce themselves. But uh, just as a reminder, as we start the show here, Rule the Galaxy, you can follow us at Rule the Galaxy SW on Twitter. You can uh, email us at Rule the Galaxy SW at gmail.com. And now, as Brent is so excited, you can follow us on YouTube. Just look up Rule the Galaxy there as well. And Brent will have on makeup and have his hair done and everything like that. And hey, real quick as a side note, our good friend, author Adam Bray, actually just started his own YouTube channel today. So if you want to check out some good content from a guy who works with Marvel, with Star Wars, it's author Adam Bray on YouTube. Go check him out. Uh, but uh, you know what? Let's get into this. I'll just go around the room, do a quick intro with all the co-hosts, and uh, we've got a got a, a hot happening show tonight lots of good topics so alfie how you doing welcome to the show hey doing great man happy to be here can't wait to dig into some of these topics good good and uh just a little side note i found out today we have a new listener and who's that uh, azalea now listens to our podcast <laughs> multiple times a day is that so she can hear her, her dad's voice? Yes. And, yeah. Oh, that is <laughs> Where's that absolutely game? precious. Right there. <laughs> that just warms, it warms the heart right there. That's awesome. And how old is Azalea again? Two. Two. Ah, uh, yes. I have a 24-year-old and an 18-year-old daughter. Enjoy them while they're two because they're, <laughs> they're a handful. Yes, uh, T-Bob. I have old man. kids. Um, Nick, how are you doing, sir? Man, I'm doing great. I am strong to quite strong, even though, uh, man, we, we, I have an eight month old, almost nine month old son. We had our first accident today with him. He uh, pulled over a wicker shelf that had all this stuff on it, got his head, if you can believe it, stuck. <laughs> I kid you not, stuck in between part of the wicker shelf. And when I tried to okay. pull it off, it wouldn't come off. I had to use the force to get it off. And, uh, <laughs> but man, crisis averted. We are, uh, we're smooth sailing. So no concussion protocol yet. Just living the dream over here. That's awesome. That's awesome. I found like, um, you know, just go get some suntan lotion or some <laughs> butter, put it on the side of their head and just, and that pops right off real quick. So it's better. Uh, I, went, yeah. I went straight up He-Man and just ripped the, pulled the metal apart. And said, okay, we're gonna get this kid's head out of here. You got it. You got it. Well, uh Brent Dypen, so glad to have you back. And you were showing us pre-show some of your oh, rebel uh, Star Wars Legions uh gear, and that was fantastic. And uh we, we definitely all need to plan another uh trip over there to play play at your house again. That was great. Anybody's welcome to come. I have a room devoted to it. It is my it is my domain of Legion. T Bob, you're welcome to come up from uh, Louisville or Louisiana. Sorry, yeah. for, you come up from Louisiana for uh, for a Star Wars weekend, but uh, play some Legion all weekend. It's a it's a great well, game. Is, I enjoy is it, is it. Isn't Gen Con about to go down up there right now? Are you all in Indianapolis? Yeah. Yeah. But I, is it is it going to be on this year? Who knows these days, right? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I had a buddy who works for the Colts who was like talking about somebody like sell sweet some. Somebody was trying to rent out a suite for it, and he was asking me because he figured out he's like, "What the hell is Gen Con?" I was like, "Oh my god, dude, I would love <laughs> Gen Con is like the mecca. It's like where one day I need to go make a pilgrimage to." You, you would, <laughs> and I, I have been told that I would geek out at the Gen Con and right. now seeing what I have seen, I would really enjoy the Gen Con up until Gen there would be. Oh insane. my God. Yeah. They have like intense, like 200 person tournament. Like it's like a, like you have to qualify to get to it um, yes. type of a thing at Gen Con. But I didn't know any of that. And I would, I've never been to a Gen Con and I now knowing what I've seen with the war gaming world, I actually would really enjoy to walk around a Gen Con. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Alfred, the amount yeah. of people, the amount of people that come to Gen Con in Indianapolis 
is phenomenal. And the amount of money it brings into the city. Yeah. I, I see people all the time who don't get it. And they're like, what are these weird people doing with all these costumes and all these games? And I'm like, they're filling every hotel, every restaurant, yep. everything while they're down here. And they're spending tons of money. Alfie, I think you were going to say something. Sorry. Uh, that's fine. It shows that it's still scheduled for August 5th through 8th. Good. I'm glad. I know that they went virtual last year with it. I'm hoping that everything calms and we can keep the summer stuff and things start to open up a little bit more and doesn't go as virtual. But I know that last year everything was virtual. Well, Brent, here's my promise to you. I'm a real bad Legions player. I'm a real good cheerleader. So I will <laughs> get down there, paint my chest up, man. You know, go go full board Team Dykeman and just Look, cheer you on, uh, man. I just want you to know, you guys think that I'm good, but the guys that I play with, there's a couple of them that play that are, uh, one guy was about, you have to qualify to get into the world tournament. So in like, I think 2019, when they hold the worlds, he was a table away. He was in the final table and finished second place and lost in like the economy, the epitome, like the, uh, for those that play poker, he caught like a runner. The guy caught a runner runner and it was like the bad beat on how he lost that table. So one of the guys was almost a world qualifier. Wow. Um, and that's something that's something that fantasy fight does an incredible job with is um, their competitive scenes. Like when I was obsessed with the miniatures game, uh, the guy I always sparred with kind of same deal. Very good. But like, I even remember loving the store tournaments where like, yep. you get uh, alternate art cards. If you finish in like the top four, the top eight, and it's like the prize just get more exclusive and cooler. And if you're already obsessed, what is cooler than getting like a custom piece of star <laughs> Wars art or miniature that you can only get by literally earning on the field of battle. Like it's awesome. It feels so good. Well, I'll do you one better T Bob. They have specific clear ac acrylic dice right now. So they yes. printed out like a, like, so it's, you have different dice for the game. And you have red attack dice, but it's a clear red acrylic. I never, dice that, I never finished high enough to win any of those <laughs> attack dice. So I actually am like creating and doing like local, trying to get a local scene started at one of our game stores to kind of create that type of uh, yeah. community. So I'm kind of trying to spearhead that in the Greenwood area. Uh, we play the first and third Saturdays down in Greenwood. So if anybody local wants to come out on the first and third Saturdays, <laughs> yeah, Greenwood Games Preserve. Next one coming up is March 6th is the next. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Well, T-Bob, I can tell you this. Um, if you wanted to plan to come up for Gen Con, you just let us know because, one, you get to hang out with your buddy, my son, Joey. You guys could hang out, talk sports, be manly, and then go hang out at Gen Con <laughs> with us and go cheer on Brent, and you'd probably play as well. But um, – I'd definitely be in to go check that out. So um, how, how, how are you doing, T-Bob? By the way, we haven't talked uh, I'm, in a while. I'm, I'm doing excellent. Uh, a couple birthdays in the Aver household, since I guess we're kind of all dad flexing over here. Uh, my daughter just <laughs> turned three, so uh, that kind of blew my mind. Uh, my second daughter's 10 months old now, and then I just turned 32 like two weeks ago. So a lot of, uh, you know, mentally processing the uh, slow uh, march to death. Uh, but, but, it's, but, but it's also, it's a very happy time. No, no, I mean, it, 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 it is, uh, it, 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 it's great. I actually just started a Marvel rewatch randomly, which I'm a mm. bit unsure about. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think I've even come on since the end of Mandalorian 2. And that was just unreal. So it, it's a really good time to be a Star Wars fan. Keep up, what, what are you on in the Marvel rewatch right now? Out of curiosity. So, so what I got interested in, what, what kind of hooked me was on Disney Plus and I have it laid out in chronological order, right? Yes. And so I was like, okay, you know, most of these movies I haven't rewatched, this would be an interesting way to do it. So it was like, yes, yeah, so I've just watched like uh, First Avenger into Captain Marvel, which was a, a fascinating way to kind of watch. And then you also realize things like, wow, Captain America First Avenger came out in 2011. Like, Holy shit, 2011 was 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. That's good. <laughs> like, I didn't realize I hadn't really seen that movie since college. And, oh. uh, and it was really good. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'm, I, think, I think it's going to be fun. Wow. Thinking about you guys talking about that being in college, that scares me. But Alfie, go ahead. <laughs> okay, you say that about seeing the movie in 2011. 
I read about that movie and I distinctly remember reading the issue of Wizard Magazine in 1998 <laughs> that laid out the Marvel Universe that was going to come. <laughs> Oh man. Alfie, I won't even tell you how old I was in 1998. I'll just let that be a mystery <laughs> to everybody. <laughs> Since we're talking about the slow march to death here, I just want to throw it out there. My birthday, which doesn't exist, is coming up next week. <laughs> it is. Yes, we and we birthday. will be accepting all Legion. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, it, uh, yep, any, I'll take uh, anything. Anything you got, I got it. But yeah, so I, I turned 41 or uh, 10 and a quarter. <laughs> I like that. Cheers. Man. So everybody knows he was born on, on Leap Day, correct, Brent? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, February 29th was my actual birthday. So I turned four, uh, four, uh, 10 and a quarter. I was 10 last year. Oh, dude. I, th- I didn't want listeners to be freaked out of like, I don't get where he's going with the math and all that. There's some old sounding 10 so. year old on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. We, we talk about this. This is our place to escape. Yeah. <laughs> Star Wars makes us feel like we're 12 again, man. Wait, okay. So I'm just curious then. Do you normally celebrate on March 1st? <laughs> the number one question everyone asks. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've always wondered this my entire life. And, and my always, my comeback always is: when you were a kid, when did you celebrate and have your birthday parties? As fast as and, I could. Yeah. Well, I, in my my the normal response that I'm looking for is you usually have them the weekend that is closest to the yes, birthday. Yes, yes, that exactly. That's what I was thinking. Like Friday or Saturday. So whatever weekend was closest to my birthday was one. <laughs> You're just like, ah, oh, fuck it. Okay, it's, the exact- it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the exact same, right? It's the exact same. And then so I'm also a teacher and I taught earth space science. So when this came up in Ooh. earth space science, the actual technical definition is the reason why we have leap day is because each day is not 24 hours. It's actually 24 yeah. hours and a fraction of a second. So yeah. if you really want to get into the, the meta and the, uh, and yeah, that's the like office this- space math. Wow. Right. It is like office. Just round up, right? Just round down. <laughs> right? right. The, <laughs> the, <laughs> probably messed fun. up a decimal point or so, something. So because of that fraction of a minute, I technically could celebrate my birthday every day of the year for four years. <laughs> uh, Rule the galaxy. Fun, Rule the galaxy. informative, <laughs> educational. Oh, we haven't even made it through the introduction yet. Yeah, it's like 0.25 or that is. So- know, have we talked about anything except introducing ourselves yet? No, no, we're no, still no. Does it that. matter? This is, this is Does a it matter? podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, gosh, that is really weird to think about. Um, but since I have a simple mind and I don't want to get hurting my head thinking about it, I'm going to throw out the first topic of tonight's show. And it actually comes from Twitter. And uh, Mara Jade Skywalker, or at Master Jedi Mara, um, who does a great job of putting Mara Jade stuff on Twitter. If you ever, if you follow that, I'm sure most of you do. Does a great job. Um, she, they said they're the go-to person for Mara Jade information. So one of the things they threw out with Cara Dune no longer being part of the Mandalorian, and that being the perfect time frame of when the Thrawn, the original Thrawn trilogy came out, they asked, will Mara Jade sneak in and become the new fan favorite in the Mandalorian series now that Cara Dune is out of the way? What do you guys think about that first? And then second, do you want to see Mara Jade be mixed back into canon in Star Wars? Alfie, I see you got a hand up already. Oh, that's just because there's an armrest there. But, uh... <laughs> well, I'll, I'll let you lead. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. But again, you know, it's like when we went with the Luke Skywalker, was he good, ever going to be in the Mandalorian? How do you have Mara Jade in the story and she's not married to Luke Skywalker? I mean, well, is, is, is there anything to say that we don't know about a, a love like an in canon like they could still have we seen anything from sequel luke that could say that he didn't have a lover maybe they didn't have I, kids. honestly 100 percent. the first time i saw the force awakens and he was standing right there at the on the island at the end there's a rock i know it's just a stupid rock now but at the time it looked like a gravestone it did so, You've already established that Luke is basically on his own for 20 years. 
Hey, he's off. Could be a gravestone. He's off doing all kinds of stuff by himself. Yeah, who, you you got plenty of, you know, story there you can fill in. Nick, uh, but so Go. here's what I'm curious about. Like, we got the whole. Uh, I think it was episode six of season two, where we thought we saw Snoke in the cloning tube, and they talked about the M count for the Metacorian count. We've talked about this on the podcast before that it's basically Dark Force rising. You know, they, they've stolen right. some from the Thrawn trilogy already. Could we see Mara Jade still as the Emperor's hand that somehow comes about? And we mm. only see snippets of it where she's still bad, but then we see her come to, similar to how we saw Grogu go with Luke, we see essentially a new telling of the Thrawn trilogy where, of course, they're going to tweak with it and they're going to mess with it to make it Disney-ish. But could we see that happen? And she still shows up as, you know, I'm the emperor's hand. Well, I guess so. So how how like cross universe do you think they're going to get with all this? And what, what I mean is like, because like I, I think they were I mean, am I wrong? They're positioning Thrawn to show up in the Ahsoka show as the main bad guy. Right. Like Ahsoka and Mando season two straight up, you know, where is Admiral Thrawn? Mm -hmm. And then so is that where she shows up? And as far as like Cara Dune goes, like. Was she headed to Rangers of the New Republic? Because I feel like Mando season three is about to be like maybe all Mandalore type of stuff. And then, so I guess it it would it, be interesting. Like, is there, because I feel like Luke will feature in none of those, but you will feel Luke in all of them. Yeah. May, you could do a, a similar thing with Mara Jade where you could get these little snippets interwoven throughout the shows if they really wanted to create this character and hype him up. And look, I mean, Ahsoka is a felony creation that was not mm -hmm. in the prequels, but was in the prequels, right? Yeah. And so it, it makes a ton of sense to, or they have a, a lot of latitude to do something like that if they wanted to. I agree. Brent, go ahead. My thing was basically what T Bob was just saying was the cross, the three storylines in the epic crossover event that they've they they kind of foreshadowed, right? So I feel like if you do bring in Mara Jade, which would be awesome, you and they've already talked about Thrawn, she could be part of the Ahsoka and not necessarily part of the Mandalore, but then be part of that whole yeah crossover series. So you could do it. There, there is definitely space to do it. Um, it's just, are we going to bring in that EU and try to bring it in in a, in a way that is disnified, as Nick said, so... I mean, oh, look, but she does Sorry. represent a strong female character, and it makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. They love, Star Wars has always been built on a lot of strong female characters, and even now, especially, I think that's attractive to a lot of like, even if we're going like right. like hard yeah. corporate, right? That's it's attractive to the kind of corporate mind as well. Well, and and, and I will say, <clears throat> speaking for Ryan Massengale, who's not here tonight, but I know Ryan one. This is one of his favorite characters, but two. Ryan keeps going back to that, okay, I'm willing to bite the bullet and see that somehow Luke broke. He cracked. And if he's, if he's lost his aunt and uncle, and if he's lost Obi-Wan Kenobi, and if he's lost his dad, how is it that is just his nephew makes him snap? Could there have been other things? And what if losing her put him on that precipice that then having Kylo break on him that even put him further over the edge so i, I don't know I, I like that theory and i think they're like you guys have said there's plenty of space in there alfie i'll start with you yeah uh i really like that theory too um i think this is wide open you could pretty much go anywhere with this it's you you've got a blank slate to work with but i just don't want like mando season two where you're just going to be constantly guessing who the jedi is so you introduce Mara into any of the series and you're instantly going to be, we're going right back to Luke. When's Luke going to be here? Is this right. episode when we see Luke? Yeah. Nick. I'd hate to see her character hamper any of the story. But they also could mess with you too, though, right? Because they're not technically tied to anything. And so in the same way, we, you know, we expected Luke to show up for Grogu, but what a cool tie that would be if, I mean, again, it would piss some people off, but if Mara, Mara Jade wasn't married to Luke Skywalker, but had this flirtatious kind of relationship that was long-term, right? That, so like she shows up, 
but then they totally give you like the, the screw you guys. You think, you know, what's coming. We're going to totally twist it on you. And they don't actually have a romance. I, I think they could mess with it and, you know, they could do something unexpected there. Agreed. Do y'all Good. think so? I mean, so much of this is tied into Luke. Do y'all think that we will see a Luke series, a, a true Luke only series? And if you do, do you recast? Do you do the technology that you employed this last season? Does that make sense over an entire series? I mean, because I wonder, because you could introduce Jade and, and Alfie would be a bit predictable, but like Nick said, there's still room to get creative with them. But like, if you kind of had them both established in the background, it would be epic to create a Luke-only series where they would both feature heavily in it. I'm, I'm not against it. Go ahead, Brent. I don't think so. I, I Okay, so this is my stand and this is my stand. I want new. I want to bring in new stuff. I want mm. to bring in new characters. I want to – I just keeping going back to the well to me is something that gets repeated. I don't see them doing a Luke-only unless it is animated in my mind because I feel like if it is animated, then you don't necessarily have to worry about the recasting. You yep. can play with the voices and do yeah. voice acting that way. Um, I, if they did it as a, as a cartoon or is it a, a, an animated series, cartoons sound kiddish. If you do it as an animated series, I can see how it could work. But I personally sitting here don't want to see a Luke only series. I like the fact that we have the Ahsoka. I like the fact that we're moving mm -hmm. and, and possibly moving into new directions with new characters. And there's room and space just because we have those old characters from the legends at EU doesn't mean that they have to be the exact same characters in this world as well. So Thrawn could be a little bit different. I mean, he probably won't be. And so if you do bring in Mara Jade, it doesn't necessarily have to be. I know Alfie, that would be probably an irritant to you just because of all the stories of Mara and Luke and having the, uh, the marriage and the kids. But I could, you could do it. You could bring her in and not have her, just like Nick was saying. But I, if you do uh, Luke only, I would only want to see it as an animated series. How does, for because I've never read the EU, um, I've, re I've read a couple of the new canon books, including two of the, two of the Thrawn ones, but how does original kind of book Thrawn compare with rebels thrawn are they are they pretty consistent i feel that new I, I would say they're very thrawn similar thrawn. they're similar very similar yeah they do justice yeah yeah i, I would say that it did look he was one of my favorite characters when those books first came out um and i thought wow it's gonna be really hard to kind of put that over into something else but i, I would say these new novels because they're going in different directions and then rebels really did portray him in a in a pretty good light um and so if they can pull off him in that way i, I do think they can pull off mara if they want to mix squeeze her into the mix there alfie were you going to say something i'm not uh entirely opposed to the the luke series i you know he's the one character that you want to know more of after return of the jedi and really like i keep saying you just don't have much of a story in that 20 30 year gap between right. and yes i know it's going to the well like brent says but if you didn't go to the well you wouldn't have ahsoka as a character you wouldn't have captain rex you know okay. it's an easy way to bring in new characters and to become associated with them well and i don't know about y'all but i've i've never cried as much as i did in the last episode of mandalorian season two for so many reasons i mean <laughs> luke coming back just when the swell hits like really when Mando takes his helmet off but um but yeah, but yeah but so much of that was like i i i just remember having this very visceral inhalation of breath when that x-wing entered the scene right because we've been talking about it been you know we've been kind of thinking about it, like seemed like all roads were leading there and then it was just this beautifully he just does something to you man i don't know what it is it's, it's like any great mythological character like zeus or anybody yeah. else there's something that just speaks to you at like a core level that ancient hero's tale wrapped up in this just really likable package i agree I agree 100%. Uh, and we could probably talk about just that topic for the whole show, but usually we try to do a force for Brent. I, I think we got more than four this week. So we're just going to, this is just the force. We're just going with it. We're, we're, we're shotgunning these topics tonight because there's just, there's a lot on the table and you know, in weeks past, you know, it's like picking through, Oh, do I want to talk about this comic or do I want to talk about this magazine article? We've got plenty out here right now. So 
I'll throw this next one out here. Um, we talked about it briefly earlier. Um, rumors, we don't know what's going on. Some people say yes, some people say no. George Lucas writing two episodes for Andor. Um, I'll start off and just say, if they do that, I think it's, I think it would be a neat nod to him. I actually would probably prefer to him uh, to have him help write or be a co-writer in one of the Mandalorians with Favreau and Filoni all working together on that because I think Andor is going to be written by somebody else or, or produced by somebody else. I'd rather to have that triumvirate working together. Uh, but if they can pull it off, I mean, I think it'd be a neat nod to the, the master, the creator and say, let's tip our cap to him and, and give him a little bit. I mean, let, let's face it. There's going to be uh, characters from, you know, Bail Organa, Mon Mothma, characters that were very near and dear to George's heart. So he could probably pull something off with that mix there. But what, what do you guys think about having the old man back in there? Nick, go ahead. I like it because it's his universe. At the same point, I would rather see him write an episode of Kenobi, who was, you know, when you actually think about it, like he came, like go back to 1970 when he wrote A New Hope and Kenobi was his brainchild. You know what I'm saying? Andor, you can say what yeah. you want, but he was, you know, as a Rogue One character, right? I would love to see, hey, you had the, all this backstory already written. You were the one that put together the original plot of Anakin, Obi-Wan dueling on Mustafar. You didn't even know it was called Mustafar yet, but you were dueling on this lava planet, right? And get his thoughts and inner workings in that. Not that I'm opposed to it, but I just say, since we're entertaining the thought, Man, I'd love to see him do something on that instead. Respect the king. Are we kidding here? <laughs> are we kidding here? What are we talking about? Right. You'd be ecstatic that he's right. coming back right, to right, write right. these episodes. <laughs> I mean, this is Professor Tolkien. Like, this is yeah. <laughs> now, granted, look, I mean, he's had some, there's been some missteps along the way, like dialogue wise. <laughs> but if nothing else, do the c concepts of the prequels have those not really like, come to shine as the years have gone on and you really looked back like it left a bit in execution but big idea is 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 always he has always been fantastic and look i i think that i think that sometimes you can be the originator of something and and you can sometimes they, a, an outside voice can really come in and make you see a lot of things that maybe you'd never even realized yourself and I feel that in Dave Filoni, George has kind of found that voice. And I don't mean to trace all things back to Filoni because it all goes to George, but who does Filoni pay the most respect to out of anyone? Is George. George. Like nobody pays more homage to the king than Filoni does. And but 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 I do think there's a bit of a, a, a just a natural symbiosis there where I think George himself now has realized some of the stronger points and probably some of the weaker points of his uh, creations and evolved in ways as far as writing goes and he's older and wiser and everything like i love him getting to come back and write these two episodes and i i, I am like just because when you, conceptually right when you think about what ideas he may try to weave into this it could be pretty epic you don't read them on like some <laughs> random stuff like he could make <laughs> some big moves in andor brent or alfie go ahead brent yeah, so my only take on this is I think conceptually he would be, I would like to be see him in a producer role or in a um, director or creator role. Um, as far as writing, so like you, you just said, some of the dialogue can kind of be a little off, but I think like you said, he is, it, it, this is his world, this is his universe, and he has created this world and this universe, and I think he can shape it. So having him as a as a sage, having him on set, having him there guiding and directing and uh, producing it, I think is where he should be at. Maybe not necessarily in the writing of it. That's just where I'm at. That's good. Alf. Hey, um, I'm kind of excited about this. I'd like to see what, you know, ideas this, he can bring to the table, especially without the pressure of writing an entire trilogy. You know, just a small little story and add to the overall picture. You know, he always talked about how he was going to go off and make small independent films. Yeah, right? this is exactly what he wanted. You know, he was, if you listen to some of his interviews right after Jedi, he was 
talking about that someday there would be TV series like this. He couldn't he quite do it yet, but now it's finally here. So let's see what the guy, you know, what he can do with it. Okay. Okay. Hey, I like I, it. I get, I get tired of that dialogue stuff all the time, man. Anakin I shot agree. his shot and he landed Padme. So show a little respect. That he did. And guess what? The guys are- But sand gets dialogue. everywhere. The guys yeah, that are- fell for the, it, man. The attack it of worked. the clothes. No, it was so wooden. The guys I mean, that are talking it, about dialogue a little are chemistry. the same guys that are, that have, that they're grateful for the, I hate sand, it's everywhere, right? It gets True. everywhere. It's terrible. True. Beautiful. The cinematic masterpiece. <laughs> it, it'll be something a hundred years from now. People are still talking about that yes. one line. Um, so, <clears throat> another point to bring up that happened just just the other day, or it was a rumor, and I'll, I'll throw this out for Kessel Run transmissions with No Outlaw and Corey Van Dyke. They were the first ones to bring this out. That and I and I hope I'm not butchering the name, and I apologize. Mina or Mena Masood, who played Aladdin in the new yes. live action Aladdin movie is the one that Disney is kind of pigeonholing to play Ezra Bridger. Um, I saw that movie. I didn't really think that much about it. It was fun. I was kind of like, okay, how does this compare to the original one? That's all I know of him, but everybody seemed to be pretty high on that rumor. Any thoughts from any of you guys in the peanut gallery on this and, <laughs> and this actor here. So at all, does it, does it perk your interest to hear, that gentleman might be the rumored Ezra Bridger. Brent. Is this the same guy that would go online and troll all the Star Wars fans saying that, like, put out pictures? Yeah. So this is a different guy. Like, so I, that's how closely I follow actors in the social media world, right? I wasn't sure if that was the same dude when I saw that story come through. Um, I'm fine with it. I actually just like the fact that they're tagging somebody to be Ezra Bridger, which means that I'm hopeful that Ezra Bridger will come into either Ahsoka or Rangers or Mando or Book of Boba or one of, or the Acolyte, whichever one you want to throw them into, right? I, of the 45 that they've announced. So I just like the fact that I, I want to see Ezra and I want to see that story. Um, and I feel like if they are, if this is true and they are tagging him to a known actor, then we're going to see him come through and I'm probably the Ahsoka show, but I, I just excited to see that part. Okay. I think maybe I think I think it might be a bit um, I'm gonna be a bit on the fence here. Uh, I but but I mean I do share the excitement with Ezra, and I and I do feel I mean Ezra I I gotta see him in the Ahsoka show. I think I think that's ideally and and whatever it might be predictable whatever but like I I would love to see him there. But um, I saw that I saw that Aladdin movie um beautiful movie, but it felt like antiseptic like it was like just so beautiful looking <laughs> clean but almost no kind of warmth to it like whatsoever and unfortunately i mean i i think i think look that's how that entire movie felt so it's unfair dependent on him but i did get that kind of same feeling from him now now that said he actually does look like an adult ezra bridger like like he, I, he, he would he imagine that is what i would imagine ezra looking like i hope he can pull off the uh the warmth of ezra which you know is well, well, well it, but, I'm on the fence. How weird is this? Real quick before I go to Nick, Ezra was called the Lothal version of Aladdin, yeah. and they're talking to the guy who played Aladdin okay. to maybe play Ezra Bridger. There you go, <laughs> Nick. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, as long as it's not a musical, I don't care. I mean, <laughs> whoa, like, whoa, hey, don't now. do a don't do a space musical, <laughs> and, I, and I'll be I'll be right on. And, and if he can pull off you know, the wishy-washy teenager feel to a degree, then right on. Then I'm uh, in. Now I just realized there are millions upon millions of dollars to be made for a New Hope musical. <laughs> I mean, are you uh, kidding me? <laughs> it could be incredible. I, be I incredible. watched, T-Bob, I watched Star Wars. I would pass on a oh, New no Hope way. Star Wars. No, no, I'd well watch done. It. Super, ba super badass practical theater effects shape lightsaber duels okay, john williams I, score made into broadway if we go to uh return of the jedi and i see jabba performing in a musical <laughs> i might well i might watch that you've seen hamilton you've never seen palpatine 
before. <laughs> <laughs> the puppet master. That's what I they used to call it. Like the godfather with the puppet things. And have... I got the high ground. What a show. I got the high ground. Let it go. Oh my there gosh. Go, boys. There's a lot Healthy. of money. Okay. Let's bypass a musical. Any thoughts on Aladdin <laughs> playing the Star Wars hey. Aladdin? I, I completely lost my train of thought. Man. <laughs> <laughs> he, I mean, he, he's yeah. going to show up at some point. You know, I hope he does a good <laughs> job with it. But, you know, I'll believe it when I actually see him on screen. Okay. Um, next topic, Daisy Ridley, who I think we all agree. I, I think we all loved her as Ray. I think she did a great job. And I think we'd all be happy to see more of that after episode nine um has said now never say never to star wars which i think is a good thing for her to say i think again looking for strong female characters you could go back to that and and cash in on that completely and i think people would do well with that but she's also being mentioned we talked about the marvel universe earlier she's also being mentioned as the next spider woman in the marvel universe what do we think about daisy ridley and I think we're all in agreement to come back to Star Wars, yes, but what about the Spider-Woman in the Marvel Universe? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm into it because I just, like you said, I find her to have that very natural, like, kind of charisma, that, like, appeal. I just kind of instantly uh, liked her. And I always like for my favorite actors in roles like this to kind of make it in other areas as well. So when they do come back to do Star Wars, right? We just want to tie back into that. They're like very like enthusiastic and feel good about it. And it hasn't just been this like, you know, this is all I ever got to do. It's like, no, I get to do this on top of this success that I had elsewhere. But uh, I, I think she could make a badass Spider Woman too. Like I, I like her on screen. I'm into it. Nick. I think she could be a badass Spider Woman, but I also have a lot of Marvel opinions and I feel like the Spider Man whatever you have to say about spider-man i feel like we've gone back to that well a lot of times and we've done a lot of spider-man movies and we've done a lot of spider-man multiverse and we've done we've done a lot of spider-man and we're doing more (laughs) are we just are we just signing off and saying like hey more spider-man till kingdom come you know kind of thing or do we say hey daisy ridley i think you'd be a great marvel character Anybody who's anybody right now is in the Marvel universe. And so can we get you in a different where it's not just you're just part of the Spider-Man, you know, another Andrew Garfield, if you will. Brent. So this isn't Spider-Man. This is Spider-Woman. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Right. Right. So it's not going to that well. It's going to the well right next to it. Right. But so (laughs) my, my only thing is when you say this, I didn't even think about it. I hadn't seen the story. But I'm thinking of the scenes of Ray when she's scavenging when we first meet her and doing and even in uh, Rise of Skywalker, mm-hmm. she, as she's climbing up into the uh, remains of the old Death Star, there are things about her and the way that she was climbing that I can see being a spider woman and in that type of action world. So that's what you said. That's what I was trying to picture is like, would she fit? And then it just reminded me of those early scenes that when we first meet Ray, and then when we last meet Ray in the, the remains of the Death Star that show her climbing around. And I think she could pull it off. You got it. Alfie, any thoughts? You know, um, I could see it. I, I, I try not to get too caught up in the, I wish this person would play this role. If could it be good? Sure. Um, I don't know. Brent Brent does make a good point though. I I do agree. Her physicality was one of her best traits as mm-hmm. Ray, and that would obviously translate to Spider Roman and uh, Nick. Get ready for Toby. <laughs> Toby bring them all back. back on the big screen, and Andrew. I mean Andrew. Andrew had to come along. We had to include him. Sweet but it's man. Fine. I hope everybody that loves Spider Man gets their spider gasm on, and it's awesome <laughs> and really cool and great. But... <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> no, nope, Sam. Um, I, I don't know if I can make that the title of the show or not, but I'll check and see. Um, so I, another story here. I, of course, we, I didn't have tickets for Star Wars Celebration 2020. 
Um, that was going to happen in Anaheim. And they, they moved it. I went in 2019. Joey and I went in 2019 to Chicago. It was absolutely fabulous. Um, I, I would highly recommend anybody to go to a Star Wars celebration. But I was starting to think about it. And I was like, well, 2022 is not that far away. And they're doing that in August in Anaheim. I wonder what's going on with the ticket situation. So I'll throw this out there to you guys. I reach out to Reed Expo, who runs all these celebrations, sent them an email, checked in. Basically, the word that they got from me is they have no confirmation that they're going to release any more tickets for 2022 because everybody who had 2020 has just rolled them over. And it was sold out for 2020. Um, you know, you know me and my big, you know, my big goals and dreams for the show. I wanted us all to take a road trip and get out to Anaheim and spend a day or two in celebration. I, this kind of this kind of put a hurt on me. If they're not going to bring out more tickets or if it's not going to be available, uh, it just kind of stuck me a little bit. Any anybody anybody thoughts on that? I mean, I guess that's a good thing they're going to be sold out again, but you know, maybe, maybe I can sneak in and say we're, we're press or media now, <laughs> you know, what, maybe I can see if I can get us on, on, on radio row or something like that. Any thoughts would, would any of you have gone in 2022 if I could have put it together? Yes, Frank. I would have. Heck yeah. <laughs> I've told you if you're, if Papa Joe is paying for the, all of this, I can go second. We've just established <laughs> that like Gen Con's in <laughs> August as well. So I don't know if I'd be able to make it because now Gen Con's becoming my number one priority. <laughs> Gen Con's 2021. <laughs> I would love... But it's I, yearly. It I is. Mean, that, that, that's another... I You know, we were talking pre-show to describe Gen Con as a, as a mecca. Uh, Star Wars Celebration would be another one of those pilgrimage type of moments. Uh, it's just anytime you're passionate about something, it's just so much fun being around that many other people who are super passionate, right? It's like, it's like even doing this is so much fun for that same reason. Well, you, I don't know if you guys saw Joey's tweet today where he was doing the TikTok where he was showing the girls the, the Star Wars action figures and how they were laughing at him. But in the real world, let's face it, when Brent talks about Star Wars Legion, his wife destroys him. When, when, when I show my wife my office, she looks at me and she's like, really? That's really what you want your office to look like? Nick, I know you're going through it. You have to get the, the sneak in the little items you can here or there, you know, Star Wars. But when you get the celebration, it's full on, man. You go, you go yeah. all out, and the amount of people there who are decked out from head to toe in the best cosplay you've ever seen in your life, yes. and the amount of stuff to buy—it's it, just so it, it it is like you said, uh, T. Bob. It, it's the mecca. I mean, it is. You go there, and you're surrounded by your people. The Star Wars Church, you know, the, the Star Wars Cathedral. So, I don't know, Nick. Go ahead. What I'm hearing is Star Wars Celebration's got to jump on that Elon Musk train and move this thing to Texas and get into a bigger bigger arena or get something bigger where we can get some more tickets printed. I mean, I would I would almost figure that they would have to do something along those lines if that is indeed the case. I hadn't even thought about that rollover situation. Like, surely, surely there are, like, talks going on right now where they're trying to figure out how to get more people in. I would hope so. Alfie, you've been to a uh, celebration before, haven't you? Yeah. What was it? The uh, second and third one? Oh, yeah. Here in to? Indy. Yeah. 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 It's, I mean, I couldn't even imagine what it'd be like now. We, Joey and I left our hotel, got on a bus, and when we got on the bus, every character you could think of started walking onto the bus from oh, the movies. Oh, my God. You That's were like really awesome. on, like, you were like really on a transport. Oh yes. God, it was a freak. It was a wild thing, but had the best time. So um, it was the uh, third one. I met Anthony Daniels in the parking garage. What? Damn. Yeah. Dude. Did you make him do an impression? No, but that guy had the look of fear in his eyes. <laughs> you were stalking him? No, no, no. <laughs> Did you have Boba Fett on your arm? No, let me, let me explain. <laughs> If you remember how Market Square Arena used to be downtown mm. with the tunnels that connected everything, those doors were for like VIPs only to get into the convention center. Well, we got the bright idea to just park in a parking garage and try to get in. Well, when he got to that door, it was locked. And now he's in this tunnel with 
200 Star Wars fans, you know, <laughs> know where to go. My gosh. Yeah. He, he, he probably was fearing for his life at that time. Yeah. That's great. It's great. Which, by the way, quick shout out to Anthony Daniels. One, it was just recently his birthday. Two, if you haven't checked out his audio autobiography, him reading it and his life in Star Wars, I mean, it is well worth the time, effort, and money. It's fabulous. Oh, yeah. I'm into yeah. that. I love audiobooks. Yeah. So you need to do that. I'll throw this one in before we get to the meat of the topics. One, There's meat um, to this episode? Yeah. <laughs> we do have some meat to this episode. Not all appetizers and hors d'oeuvres. Um, but this is an hors d'oeuvre. Um, November of this year, The Queen's Hope, the final of the trilogy by E.K. Johnston, is another Queen Amidala, whatever, uh, Padme novel. I read the first two. And you know what? They really made the prequels and the Clone Wars better. This one is what goes on kind of during Revenge of the Sith. So mm-hmm. it's got a lot of stuff with her handmaidens and things behind the scenes. So I'm really looking forward to this book. If you guys haven't checked out those first two, it, it definitely jumps into a lot of the relationship stuff. You learn about how Captain Panaka and good old Sheev are best buddies from the old days. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. So uh, just something to throw out there because, you know, another point of something that came out this week. So I'm looking forward to it. And EK, if you're listening, w- would love a copy in advance if you want. So go ahead, T-Bob. Do you ever... Uh... Do you ever get any insight into how she felt when, like, Anakin was like, yo, I killed all these women and children and sand people and everybody? Because that's always, that always is one of the funniest I parts slaughtered of the movie. Them. <laughs> she's just like, oh, come here. Come here. Like, it's okay. They deserved it. Come here. <laughs> you know, um, the, the first two were before the Clone Wars and before um, they, they were both prequels to. One was prequel to Phantom Menace and one was a prequel to Attack of the Clones. So it did not. Oh, yeah. So, the, I mean, so this could potentially is her. Yeah. This could deal with a lot of her kind of trying to process that as who yes. knows what happens to this relationship. Oh, that sounds great, too. It, it was good. It was really good. Well, it, it, the, the first two were really good. So, two things that, that hit this this week um, that, that one was on Twitter and the other one just got announced today. So, we could talk about this one because I think we're all super excited about it. The Bad Batch, officially May 4th. May the 4th, Bad Batch is coming out. I rewatched the sizzle reel, the, the preview the other night, wrote down some quick notes. There was a lot in that, like, minute and a half. Um, did you guys get a chance to watch that again, the preview again or anything? Or yep. let's just talk about it. I mean, th- there's a lot of good stuff that can happen in this. We, we see things like the emperor announcing that he's starting the, the galactic empire. We, we see Fennec Shan, um, you know, we see, I think we're going to see flashbacks from before order 66. I think we're going to see things after order 66. I, I think we're going to see a whole gamut of things in here and, and probably a lot of surprises. Any general thoughts from any of you guys to start off on that? Alfie, go ahead. One thing I'm really looking forward to in this series and, you know, it could just be 10 seconds in the series, but it looks, from the trailer it looks like it's pretty significant to the story i want to see that transition from the galactic republic clones to the empire's clones i mean is that like a a snap of the fingers is it gradual because you see some scenes in that trailer of them back on camino looks mm-hmm. like they're even in the uh, training areas from the clone wars yeah. so but then they're fighting against each other so there had you lead you to think there has to be something that happens that they're now marked as enemies of the empire. Yeah, so is that when we're going to see this, you know, transition of the clones from what we've grown to love and see as the good guys to being the bad guys. I agree. And, and we're also, you know, thinking about that. Did they have chips in their head? Did they not? Because they were kind of mutated and things like that. Go ahead, Nick. I, I, what piqued my interest the most in this trailer was the Fennec Shan, uh, where, where you saw her, only because thinking about what this could bring in with other bounty hunters, with other assassins, with other things. Uh, I know we've talked at great length about the, um, the syndicates that are out there as well, too. What are the things that you're going to see come through? Um, and I know we've speculated, but the idea of, 
a Cad Bane appearance at some point where you see uh, the unworked kind of initial thing that we saw. And if you get on YouTube, you can still see it, but where Cad Bane is killed essentially, you know, and, and getting an answer to where is Cad Bane and what, and what happened with him. I would love to see some payoff of that in Bad Batch. I don't know if we will. I know that's speculation, but seeing her, you know, kind of boosted my interest of going, man, could we see, I thought it was so timely, but I also thought, could we see other characters show up? Like well, and, and if I'm not mistaken, it was Boba Fett who kills Cad Bane in those pre-made right. things we haven't seen yet. And who does she team up with in the book of Boba Fett and the right, Mandalorian? Right. Absolutely. Boba Fett. So yeah, I'm, I'm all done with that. Brent, go ahead. So there's a couple of things with it. When you talked about other bounty hunters, that brings up two images that came to mind when I saw the trailer. One was the guy with the light lasso. It's a brief second. He's kind of got like what looks like two horns coming out of his head. And it's like a, it's a, a four or it's a power. And it looked like it's he's, lightsaber. He's from that sla- it looks like he's from that slaver's planet from yeah, Clone Wars. The Clone Wars. Yeah. So there's that guy. And then there's also a part where uh, a guy with a, brimmed hat is smashing some clones heads together that both look like they were in a bounty hunter type uh character bounty hunter type role i does anybody it was another quick little second um he had kind of an odd job like round uh look. slicer type hat and then he smashes a couple clone heads or stormtrooper heads together um those two characters just from the quick flashes interest and p- pulled me in as to like what's going on also, with my love of Legion, <clears throat> when I saw the Moscow-style uh, spires on one of the planets when the ship was landing, you what kind of that? Envi- <clears throat> well, what if, what what kind of environments are we going to be into? Like, what planets? What new planets? What new locations are we going to be going to? And that, like, those are a couple things that I pulled from it that you guys haven't mentioned. Well, they and they they showed I think uh, four different planets. I wrote down four different planets they were taking their ship was going into, and it, it almost felt like. I wrote down a team of space question mark, you know, but they're showing up for a different adventure on a different planet, doing different things, um, you know, throughout, throughout the series. So I thought that was really cool that maybe that's, maybe that's what it is, but Brent, you're going to get plenty of uh, terrain to be able to make after this. Go ahead, Alfie. Rewatching the trailer, Brent, it looks like that's breaker in some type of disguise with the hat on. Oh, okay. The bigger guy. Okay. Yeah. But Wrecker? also Wrecker. Yeah, that's it. Sorry about that. And then Ebo, I think, is the bounty hunter that you're thinking of from the Clone Wars that Embo. had the hat. Embo. Yeah, we were talking about him with Adam Bray. Embo is the but he's, he's got like a spy, like I don't know. You know what I'm t- you saw it. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. And and the third thing I forgot to say, Tarkin. Yes. <laughs> Tarkin. Tarkin. Come on. Tarkin. There we go. All right. Bob, how about you? Some quick thoughts? Uh, Anything? Yeah. So I actually didn't. Um. I've well, I've seen it twice. The the the, the trailer, right? But I haven't really sat down like on the computer. I watched it on my phone twice, and I haven't really picked it apart yet. But I will say this: what stuck with me, um, and this is from a service level perspective, it just looked really badass like the action and mm-hmm. it the animation. If there's one thing I love in a lot of the animated content, it is their ability to do ships and like cities and like these like great just beautiful landscape shots space battles planets like and so involving that many locales that many different uh machines of war on the battle i mean like legitimately as a legion fan you will be getting models probably from <laughs> this cartoon like 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 things that will be introduced so I just like that you, it, it just fascinates seeing this evolution of maybe what they were allowed to do in like the Clone Wars days, which admittedly was a lot to now like this is, um, it, I, well, I don't want to say it's too adult because it's obviously not going to be like that, but like, you know, they, they're, they're letting them lean into this being this kind of action movie. At least it looks like that. Like, it, like it looks like it's going to be pretty intense at times. And even the last season of Clone Wars that they made definitely had that vibe like that was very mm-hmm. intense and, and kind of very adult and so i i like the creator I, I like them being able to do their vision for this for this bad batch squad good good any other thoughts on stuff alfie go ahead after re-watching this trailer today and i know this is just wishful thinking what if this series becomes the anti-rebels series where 
you know, Rebels was this group after the Clone Wars who came together and then started working towards the rebellion. Hmm. What if it's the Bad Batch in, let's say, I don't know, a few rogue Jedi who's left who just decide, hey, we're going to go out and, you know, tear it up. Yeah. We want to watch it burn. Yeah. Kind of like dirty, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. That makes, yeah. I mean, that makes a ton of sense. The anti heroes. I kind of like it. I'm, I'm open to any of it. I mean, I look, the, the, the characters are tech, tech echo. Yeah. Echoes the, the clone who, who was uh, injured and lost crosshair wrecker and hunter. Right. That does that one, two, three, four, five. That's five. it. Um, so I love the diversity of the characters. The characters have different personalities. They have different skills. So you, like you said, if you take all those and make it to where they're just like, hey, we're going to show up, blow stuff up, wreck things. You know, again, Alfie, you mentioned that changeover from the clones being, you know, the good guys to the clones being the bad guys. And when does that switch happen? Are they now going out and target practice and, and shooting off these helmets, you know, and, and blowing these guys away? Are they sitting yeah. at the academies and taking out people fresh when they're right out of there? Um, th there's so many different directions you could go. You could see Imbo, you could see Cad Bane, you could see Boba Fett, Phoenix Shand, we already know. And man, the Grand Moff Tarkin, I, I got to think that scene right there was before Order 66, right? When he was still a general of the Republic and they were still working for the Republic. So any other things you want to see or you didn't see or, or that are related to Bad Batch? Because, you know, it's, uh, let's see, um, March, April, two months away. So yeah, go ahead, T Bob. Uh, I, I don't know if I want to see your tendency, but but somebody mentioned earlier, but seeing the Palpatine speech, uh, but from a different angle, like outside with like the the legions lined up and looking at the screen and getting the the very dictatorial feeling, like uh, I I thoroughly enjoyed that part. I thought it was well done. Go ahead, Nick. I know there was speculation at one point about. Does the Bad Batch, are they responsible for getting Grogu out of the temple? I'm curious, do we think that that's still a thing? After watching Mandalorian 2, does that seem like that could even be in the realm of possibility? Brent, you're shaking your head no. I'm just curious, after watching this trailer, does that seem like, I know we didn't get a ton, but any tie into the new Mandalorian? I don't I know no if idea. it's necessarily going to be the series but again it's Filoni and right. has he left many storylines undone no so I would anticipate at some point we're going to go back to that uh, you guys just mentioned it we could still see Ahsoka in the Mad Batch I mean there, there's every kind of Filoni thing you could think of is tied into this Brent you look like you had something to say or you're just thinking very hard about this. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I guess it's because of the, I, I never really put a lot of stock into the whole Grogu pulling out uh, or being pulled out by the Bad Batch. I never really kind of bought into that. So when you say, is that still there? I never believed it or wanted to believe it from the beginning. If it happens, it happens. But I never really thought that that, I don't know. I didn't see that as something that was going on. I prefer to think of them as the A-team. Now that could have been yeah. one of their missions. I feel like they're going to be mercenaries for hire that are going to have to fight the clones. I, that's the, that's what I would like to see is the, the, from the bad batch is that a team. Um, but yeah, I, I just never really put a lot of stock into it. So when you brought that up, that's why I was shaking my head is I just never really, uh, yeah, I heard the rumors. We've talked about them on the podcast here, but I, I just didn't, I don't know. The, 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 the 18 thing <clears throat> is good. Uh, or I, I would like that too, because that would give you a real chance to explore the scum and villainy side of things, you know, like y'all were talking about the mm -hmm. bounty side of things. You'd be running in a lot of degenerate circles. Also Kylo should kill Grogu in order <laughs> to break Luke. Uh, if, if, I mean, that, that and, and you want to talk about Kylo immediately wow. getting a lot to his name, he would yeah. have Han Solo and Grogu on his kill list. That'd be and possibly Mari Jade and 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 Snoke, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, Snoke. Exactly. <laughs> and almost Leia. I was gonna say, he should have had quite. Leia, he should have had, he should have had his mom, uh, uh, Bridge, uh, not quite. But, but Mary Poppins came out of nowhere. Oh, here we go. All right. All right. So, so you know what, T-Bob, you gave us the natural 
the natural um, way for us to transition into pretty much the last subject of the night. But I was watching on Twitter the other day, and somebody was kind of ticked off and saying, <clears throat> people are all excited about Darth Vader slash Anakin Skywalker being redeemed. And they all look at him in a certain way and, and love how it ended for him. They should have allowed Ben Solo slash Kylo Ren to do the same thing. And this person is a Raylo and really wanted Ray and, and, and Ben to get together at the end of it. And I started to really think about this. There was nothing. I like the end of the Anakin Skywalker story because he redeemed himself and gave up his life to save his son. And he didn't go on and then have a happy life and find a new girl and live for a few decades and have new adventures. He was gone. Yeah. Um, I, as much as I think Adam Driver and Kylo Ren, Ben Solo was one of the best things of the sequel trilogy. He was phenomenal at everything he did in there. Yeah. Um, he was just as much of a mass murderer as his grandfather was. And that relationship to say that there's so many people out there that want him to still, and I see it every day going well with the world between worlds and all this. And now that he's redeemed, you could bring him back and he and Ray could be together. I, I'm guys, I'm just not buying it. I'm not buying it. I think it's time seeing, to let him go. Yeah. Just if you see him give his life back up for Ray, I thought that was a perfect ending. Just like Darth Vader's way to do that for Luke. Does anybody on here have conflicting thoughts or are we just because we're 30s and 40 year old men, 20s for Nick, sorry, 20s, 30s and 40 year old men, do we look at this in a different way? I just don't see that having that love story that goes on after episode nine is is the right way to go. I'll start with Alfie. Go ahead. Yeah, we look at it a totally different way because I don't put any thought in that whatsoever compared to how much thought. I've put into where the TIE fighter came from. <laughs> where, where Kylo, where Ben found the TIE fighter? Yeah, where'd that come from? That, that's what I think about. Yeah, he, <laughs> to me, he, you know, he, he died, he redeemed himself. He's one with the force. It's, you know, he's gone. It's time but to But no one's, go. hold on, hold on, Alfie. I'm taking your words for you. No one's ever really gone in Star Wars. Because we brought so many people back, right? Because if they fall a thousand feet, they come back. But to that point, like we've discussed on this show, he did come back from falling a thousand feet. And then he died and disappeared and became one with the force. Can he come back as a force ghost? I don't know. Probably. That, that's iffy on how that works. Some people can, some people can't. I, my, my, my problem with Kylo is that a lot of, and absolutely, I do not want to see him come back for a relationship. Because as you said, him and Darth Vader and his Skywalker, they are horrible people who did a good thing. Good on him. But I'm not going to like sit there. Like if Ray would actually get in a long-term relationship with him, you would have to have major character questions about what the hell is going on in Ray's brain and like judgment questions. I get kind of being in the moment, you know, he's the bad boy and everything, but like not relationship material whatsoever. Um, so I, I, my deal with Kylo is though, he was never able to achieve his full legacy I mean, this man killed Snoke, assumed control of the First Order, and then immediately, within the first 20 minutes of Rise of Skywalker, goes from hunting Palpatine to being made subservient to Palpatine. So, like, I, I, I wanted guy. I always thought that Kylo was going to be the big bad, and Adam Driver deserved the opportunity to be the big bad, and he got he got denied it. And so, Kylo in that last movie lacked a lot of kind of punch with me a lot of his teeth were kind of taken out in that moment i mean this is a man who killed his own father and and yet palpatine was just like i got all these ships man <laughs> just <wait. laughs> and, and, and even if he would have killed palpatine at the very beginning those ships were still there correct yes, and that would have been all like I, I would have been down for that like like yes kill him and assume control like i wanted i i guess whatever we, we could talk about that but we wanted from star wars I just really loved that character so much at that point and thought that his potential, his ceiling seemed so much higher than where he got. But but it's over. It is what it is. Don't bring it back. Well, and then to that point, that was 
kind of the problem with the first movie is as soon as you get introduced to Kylo Ren, you instantly think, okay, well, the trilogy is going to be his redemption story. So again, you're yeah. just, okay, is this the moment? Is this the moment? Is this the moment? And like you said, he never becomes that big bad guy. Right. I liked him in The Force Awakens, and as he went on, he became more of that Luke whiny guy to me. Like, for, as I watched him, I felt like he was more of a whiny and temperamental teenager and the more that he went on, and I didn't necessarily like the, his arc as he went through. So that was, when I look at it, like, I guess what I'm getting at is the, uh, the scene in Rise of Skywalker where he picks the guy up and throws him to the ceiling because he was talking back to him. He just comes across as that, like, and he on, on it, yeah, on steroids, whiny Luke type character that was like just the epitome of going over the top with that same type of I don't know. And he bursts onto the scene pretty intimidatingly in Force Awakens. Like he looks mm-hmm. so badass. Does when, all, yeah. the scene. when he oh. catches that blaster bolt in midair. So that, 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 that is one thing that you know all these other shows could get into a lot. It's the same way that we're dealing with. Uh, prime luke we could be dealing with like a that masked kylo ren going around doing you know uh crazy stuff throughout the universe really because that's what it's all about you know fleshing out the sequels nick go ahead i have a hard time when we talk about the Raylo thing because again i missed out on the rise of skywalker round table that we did but i feel like it was so such a stretch so crazy alfie's talked about it of you know it was like a matter of days, you know, and and, and we went from hating each other to loving each other. I would equate this whole conversation to like the bad family reunion that like, it's not funny yet, but a couple of years from now, maybe we'll be able to laugh about it. But like right now it's still too fresh. And so when I hear the Raylo stuff and people going like, well, maybe he could come back and Raylo. I just go, shut up, (laughs) shut up. Don't talk about it. It, 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 uh, it bothers me thinking that even even your interpretation of watching that movie could be they had a love interest. It was a thing. I go, what the heck are we looking at here? I mean, Even on. the director came out and said, no, there was no love interest. Come on. What are we looking at so, here? Hey, one one director said there was, and the other one said there wasn't. Well, yeah. the one who ended it said there wasn't. The one who had the final say <laughs> said, fooey on you. It's not a real thing. Brent. So the two major love stories that we have had, right? have been the most forced love stories ever. So there's the Raylo, and I'm thinking Anakin and Padme. Both of them are very cringy, and both of them, in my mind, were very forced and very fast. All right. Han and Leia. All right, 12-year-old hey, Nick's about to get fired up right here. Don't you and, dare. George got Han and Leia right, though. George got Han and Leia right. Don't you dare I, compare Anakin and Padme to Raylo. And- so I was going to ask, so I was going to ask, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm going to compare. Those two were very forced and cringeworthy. I'm, I'm sorry. The whole Padme, Anakin, and Raylo to me. So go for it, Nick. Tell me why I'm wrong. I'm glad that I fired 12-year-old Nick up. Because guess what? At least there's two and a half movies, maybe even you could even argue three movies, of plot development that leads you to go, hey, you know what? kind of makes sense why those two would be together i get it it's a stretch there's an edge gap but it makes sense it's not like the last 12 minutes of a movie where you're like hey you know what let's have him kiss that would be fun but no but they were but she he was topless in the forced dyad i mean that he's just a hunk that drew him in. dude he did look good he's wide (laughs) (laughs) he said put your cow on i don't want to look at that that's weird I don't Coach O would have recruited that chest right there. Yeah, dude, Coach O would have served up some bro. gumbo with that. <laughs> he didn't even put a top on. He was working out. He was just getting swole. No, look. Wait, so, am, am I gathering through the con- – wait, so I'm, I want to make sure I'm not misunderstanding. I feel like in Last Jedi, Raylo was not a thing, and that Rise of Skywalker made it a thing. I feel like in Last Jedi, it was – they had this sort of innate connection and then her denying his handshake was the severing point. And that was like, okay, it's over now. Now it's on. We're going to go toe to toe. And then rise of Skywalker is where they randomly kiss at the end of the movie. And I audibly in the theater went, yo, what the, what, what, what just happened? <laughs> that felt forced. Why Maybe when they were sitting and- on act two in the dyad, that's when they should have kissed instead of, Instead of touching fingertips together and and having that that slight moment there. I, I don't know. I mean, 
I didn't see the kiss coming in the end of Rise of Skywalker. I will say that. And Anakin picking up the pear and moving it in the sky, that wasn't forced and foreplay. Brent you never tried to impress your wife. I mean, dude, I would do that if I had the force. I would absolutely do that. One hundred percent, you would do that if you had the force. Yeah, I would. Not, I'm not saying that I wouldn't do that. that not at all. Oh my gosh. Like, that, that's not. I, I feel that's the same kind of forced, cringeworthy. No, what I'm saying is, no. But if we're comparing the two, Nick's right. It's it, it's a time thing. Like cringeworthy, yes, but the prequels put in the time. Uh, the sequels did not put in the time with that relationship. No, it didn't come out of left field in the sequels, right? Like you watching, you're like, oh, this is cringy. But how many of us, if they put a camera on us and our wives and our love story would be like, <laughs> oh, it's a little cringy. You know, like that was, <laughs> come on, guy, you can, you can come up with better than what you just said there, right? Like all of us would have that moment. <laughs> this was like, hey, you know how crazy it's been killing the em- emperor? Yeah, that's nuts. Kiss. What the heck? <laughs> Where did we just go from? Like, what just? Yeah, I just, I don't they like, just could I, never really decide can... what the story was in the sequels. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Fair. were they or were they not? They really? needed to make a decision at some point. T Bob, we we know your affection for the Last Jedi. We we've yeah. discussed that before on a number of shows, and and in the Rise of Skywalker show that we just recently did, I think the main discussion point that we came down to was. If you were going to do JJ's trilogy, do it. Yep. If you were going to do Ryan's trilogy, do it. But to do it the way they did it is what turned a lot of fans because the fans who loved The Last Jedi then didn't like The Rise of Skywalker. The ones who didn't like, you know, The Last Jedi wanted more like The Rise of Skywalker, but it was just too convoluted to make it really feel like you were in an ebb and flow of things. So I feel like definitely how they approached it is a bit interesting given the meticulous planning that they're into now. Um, I don't even view it as a Ryan trilogy, right? So I, but, but I guess the thing is I love the first two steps of the journey. Like I love force awakens and I love last Jedi. And I actually think they work great in concert together. I think a lot of JJ's strengths were very well served in reintroducing star Wars making it familiar while innovating, while introducing new characters. And it didn't, you didn't have to be in depth to these characters because a lot of that mystery was so tantalized and so good. And then I felt like Last Jedi really started to plumb some depths. And that's why, to me, it's not a JJ, do the JJ trilogy, like you said, or do a, a three director trilogy, which they had originally committed to and they bailed. Like if they had, even if they had gone with Trevor, I don't know if it would have been a better movie, but I at least, I like the crawl thing that I read from it. But like, who knows what it'd been like, but I think that original vision made more sense than the sandwich vision mm-hmm. because then JJ tried to kind of fail, fail his original ideas, which was impossible given the, the wild directions that Johnson took last Jedi. Go ahead, Brent. I think that Iger had a play in that too, because of where they felt that it was going. I think that, I think they might've been hamstrung just a little bit, from higher ups as well so i think some of the creative process they wanted to try to appease and bring more of the fans back with that third one um and i think oh yeah no they 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 bowed to the will of the internet for sure a hundred percent like it feels focus tested to death yeah and i feel like yeah and i feel like that was i think in my mind like if i I want you to have fan service, but I don't want you to change your story because of the fan service. Yeah. I want you, I want, if you're going to go in a direction, put the little things in there that make me feel like I'm part of the universe, but make it go in the story you want to go. So what I'm talking about is like the Mandalorian. I feel it does a great job of doing that fan service, but it's a completely new story. It's they're going in the story they want to go and they're throwing those Easter eggs and there's nuggets for those star Wars fans to know, Hey, this is where it's at. Like they bring in the Cobb Vanth, they bring in the Anakin pod racer engine. They bring in the crate dragon with the pearl mm-hmm. that they bring in. They bring in things that like only the hardcore star Wars fans would know. So that's what I like about what they were doing. And I wish they would have continued and kept going and not bow to the yes. internet and the fan. That's, that's think, a really good oh, point. Sorry. Cause the prequel, Oh my bad. The prequels work out better for that commitment as well. Like even for whatever that story is, it at least committed to itself. Episodes one through three. Sorry. Alfred. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, you're fine. I, I think, this really boils down to the people who chose the direction never saw the ending of lost 
they only saw like the first <laughs> few seasons. <laughs> and, you know, like T-Bob said, The Force Awakens, you know, was such a great movie because it, it was classic J.J. Abrams. He's a great set, setup guy, but yes, man, finishing something, that's just not his style. Well, and T-Bob, this, this will probably surprise you. I, I know you, in our discussion again, Rise of Skywalker episode we just did a few weeks ago, we actually, or maybe it was even just in the last show, we discussed the new Ryan Johnson trilogy that everybody keeps discussing. And believe it or not, everybody said, you know what? It's Star Wars. It's Ryan Johnson. Maybe some of us weren't 100% sold on The Last Jedi, but if it's new Star Wars and he's allowed to go in his direction yes. for a trilogy, why would we not want to go to see that? Why would we say, oh, well, he did that, so we're not going to see it. We, we'll, we'll be there buying the tickets right away. So it, it's it's just give them the chance to do the story they're going to do and not, not clutter it up. That's my thing, right? Ultimately, I hope that, and I don't know if Disney did learn these lessons or if maybe Favreau just wields such a big stick that he's able to inoculate the Mandalorian. But like, ideally, the overall lesson to be learned with the sequel trilogy is to let creators create. Like, it's a super collaborative process. Nothing comes out of one mind fully formed, right? So stuff will evolve, but like, they and, and it's something that they got away with a couple times. I mean, even Solo ended up being a pretty good movie, but they had a heavy hand in Solo and financially that did hit them, right? So like they've had a couple times now where I think they've been burned by getting over involved and kind of obstructing the creative process. And so I just, I, 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 I would hope that, that they let these artists really fulfill their original visions, which again, Favreau, he is a Hollywood megastar and you can see him able to do like to mm -hmm. give everybody that freedom within that show. Um, hopefully that's extended to the rest of this stuff. Well, but does that work so well because they're a duo though, that kind of checks off of each other. Yeah. Favreau and Floney. Absolutely. It is. It is one of those perfect, you know, stars aligning moments where Favreau has the clout and the technical prowess and Filoni has the, uh, <clears throat> the creative prowess and just the mind and just like a natural understanding of star Wars. unlike anyone I've ever heard speak about. I mean, again, Filoni's monologue at the end of the first episode of gallery on Disney plus is yeah, that's something like it's the artwork. best five and a half minutes of star Wars or whatever that I've ever heard in my life. And so to be teamed up now with Favreau and then Favreau and, and all of his, like, like not just story prowess, but like filmmaking, like, because th th that's how, I mean, that first episode of Mando season two, I mean, you can tell that Favreau is a master filmmaker. I mean, it feels so cinematic. And then even down to like the lessons that he's learned in making all these other random movies that led to like the LED building that they're in and everything else is just, it, it's, it is movie making magic. I talk about this in my Mandalorian podcast. Sometimes just when all the elements work together, that's why we call it magic because it's so hard to do and there's so many different variables, but every now and then they combine in the perfect ways and it's just otherworldly. Like it just transports you. Yep, I agree. I agree. Well, you know, we started off that conversation talking about whether Ben should have been redeemed and having, having a future relationship with Ray. And we went down a, a huge rabbit hole, but you know what? It was fabulous. So Brent, you had your hand up before we start signing off here. All I was going to do is bring it back. And so, no, Ben does not need to be redeemed and come back. <laughs> I was just, I was, just you, for the segued before, you, you segued before I could try to bring it back as well. So just... <laughs> well, perfect timing. Perfect timing. Um, so, hey, it, closing thoughts from anybody. I'll start with Alfie. Any closing thoughts from all these great discussions we've had tonight? If there ever is going to be more Ben Solo, I want, like T Bob said, I want a Kylo Ren series him at the Jedi temple fall yep. to the dark side Knights of Ren please just <laughs> show us something about the Knights of Ren yeah yes and the Knights yes. of Ren are rivaling yes. Boba Fett for on Boba Fett in the original trilogy for on-screen ineffectiveness it's absurd yes. who are these people I want to know like I want to know like I didn't read the comics I guess you have to read the comics I don't I'm a visual like I you've got me into the dark side I'm dabbling 
with the books. <laughs> I want the visual, but I don't know and understand who these people are, and they're cool. Comic looking. books have right. pictures. You have to use your eyes to read the comic books. <laughs> That's visual. It's like, they're like okay, sorry. drawings that and their color. This doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Got little words that- to read. That, that that's effort. Sorry, I want l- no effort. I want it to come to me with no effort. Put it on Disney part. Plus. <laughs> Just put it on Disney Plus. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yes. But I want. I really want to know. Like, I want to know the backstory. I want to know who are these people. Who are the Knights of the Ren? They look really cool. They look badass. So who are they? <laughs> so if you do, Kylo, I'd like to see that part of it. Yes, I agree. Okay. All right, Nick. Any any closing thoughts? Any from any of the topics we hit tonight? You want to hit on before we check out comic books are heroes too brent comic books are <laughs> heroes too you want to know about the knights of ren pick up a comic book brent i'll it's film good. them all I have, and i'll send I have, it to I you have in a no video comics. Film them and read them. <laughs> put, put them on this read them and narrate them and put them on the youtube channel yes i will do that i'll watch them I'll probably get copyright laws and be sued by Lucasfilm and Disney. So, but so you better watch out. Disney has some good algorithms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With Disney. At least you're talking with Disney. And this is true. <laughs> I got my foot in the door. <clears throat> T Bob, you have um did you say you have a Mandalorian podcast? Uh yeah, we do the uh four Mandalore podcast. We've done a couple we we did two seasons of it's me, my friend Nick and Jesse the Jetpack Don. It's a uh it's 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 a good time. It's a lot like this. It's just three guys who really love Star Wars. Okay. The best part about the, the we have this college kid Nick on there, uh, my old intern, but he uh, he's obsessed with the Kotor video game. So he's been a great resource in that regard. Nice, good, good. Okay, well we'll make sure that we pump that out. Let people go check that out for you because I didn't even know that you had that. So, yeah. Brent, were you going to say something? No, I just need to get some information from him when we get off of the podcast about the KOTOR stuff. <laughs> okay. I told I told you I'm dabbling in the books, right? So I started with Revan. I did yep. deceived and learned about Darth Malgus. And I just want to know, is it worth continuing down that that rabbit hole? That was really all. because So he's got his little intern. So I was going to ask him when we got like off. Like to play the games or to keep reading books? The, wanna, the books. I, the book aspect. I think a KOTOR remaster is in the works. Don't quote me on that. Mm-hmm. I wanted to hear that is. the other day. That's what I heard as well. Because I would be into that. I know they still really play them on phone. Xbox. I know I, I played a little bit of. They even released on phone. I played a little bit of it there, but I was like, I want to wait because I know they're probably. I mean, it makes too much sense to remaster, and it could be like really, really. So yeah, I'm 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 very excited for when that comes out. Uh, before you go, I just want to say that this is a ton of fun. <laughs> so thank you to uh, everyone, Joe, for having no, me. You- I'll see Nick, Brent. It was uh, it was awesome. Well, no Thumbs problem. Fire is always a good time. That's right. That's right. Well, I will give you guys a quick rundown. Um, Nick and I will be doing an Arc Trooper Archives, which is our Clone Wars show. <clears throat> that will be on uh, season two of the Clone Wars, episodes five through eight, the second battle of Geonosis. So keep an eye out for that coming out soon. Um, next week, we will have uh, Mark Newbold from StarWars.com and Fanta Tracks, which is a great app if you want it. It's a free app, all the Star Wars news you want on it. Uh, but he, he's a great writer. He'll be on the show with us. I'm thinking maybe next week, guys, anybody interested in Rogue One, little Rogue One movie review? We good with that? Right yes, on. I'm seeing a lot of heads. Oh, yeah. Yes. So let, let's plan on let's plan on that be our main uh, focus unless some huge news comes out and we'll focus on that. But um, that's where we are. That's what we're doing. Again, thank you, Alfie. Thank you, Brent. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, T-Bob, for coming and being a part of Rule the Galaxy uh for mandalore correct is, is yeah for mandalore podcast for mandalore podcast we'll get that going i'll go check that out myself and then um you know again follow us at rule the galaxy sw on twitter email us rule the galaxy sw at gmail.com check this out this will actually be posted on youtube here in the next few days so check us out on youtube at rule the galaxy and for all of us here at rule the galaxy podcast um oh one last thing I think we might be going to a toy fair in Xenia, Ohio on March 27th. We're so there. If you're going to be around in the Midwest, go check that out. Sorry, fans. Had to throw that in the end there. Um, but uh, until next week, thanks to everybody, and may the force be with you. <laughs>